But again, if anybody doesn't know who I am, most of you should pretty much at least know what I looked like from ninth grade and remember what I, who I was. But I'm Mr. Bendit, and I'm your assistant principal. I'll be the lucky one handing you a diploma in two short years. Again, as I move on, I want to let you know every change I'm going to go through today, every single one, we had you in mind in building that change to make a better education system for you here for the last two years and every other student that Edward Arby comes afterwards. Just so you know who the most important people are around in the building, as I would say, <laughs> just kind of a joke, but um, these are the other assistant principals. If you have a major problem and I'm not around or something you really need to talk to somebody about that's really pressing or something very scary or something you need to let someone know right away and you can't find me, you can find any single one of these other individuals and you can let them know anything you would let me know, right? And they'll either come get me right away in whatever I'm doing, stop me for what I'm doing, and or handle the situation themselves. If anybody doesn't know who they are, it's Miss Simone. She's the principal, right? She's the top left. Miss Cytek, she's the assistant principal in the ninth grade. Mr. Remy is the 10th grade assistant principal. Mr. Henders, Mr. Hensel, the 12th grade assistant principal. Mr. Finch, are you still here? Mr. Finch and Ms. Palladino, they're the two other assistant principals. They're waving their hands right there. They can help you with anything else if I'm not around that you need help with, right? So just know who they are and know that if there is an issue or a problem, you can go to them the same way you guys would come to me, all right? And if you just want to talk to me, you can say to them, hey, can you grab Mr. Bender for me? I need to speak to him right now. I trust nobody else. So can you please go get him or whatever he's doing, and they'll come get me too. All right, just want you to know who they are, to know who they are to walking around the building. Maybe say hello every once in a while and good morning as they walk by. This is Miss Shea. If you forget who she is, she's our secretary. She's upstairs right now working on getting some people some homerooms as they disappeared from our schedules over, over the past couple days or people coming into the school building. But she's the mo she is the person, is first line of the, like I'd say, of defense or the first person you see when you walk into the center. If you don't know where you're going or what you're doing, you can always ask her. She knows either the answer to your question or the right place and the right person to answer the question to let you know that, hey, this is how we're going to handle this issue. And maybe it's send an email to your counsel. They'll get back to you. Maybe Mr. Gentile will be right back with you in a couple minutes. Have a seat here on the, in the center chairs, and we'll be right with you. She can answer that question for you and, or direct you on how that's going to happen. It's been like a little while since, you know, most of us have walked into the center to maybe ask a question, right? It's been a lot of emails back and forth, and you can still do all those means of communication and are just as important, but I just wanted to introduce you to her and so you knew who she was again and you got familiar with her face so when you walked in the center, you knew that, hey, ask Ms. Shea the question first and she'll let you know either the answer and or where can I get that answer or who do I got to contact or how do I got to contact them, whether it's email, a school G message, vice versa, to try to get that information that we need. And right now, Ms. Catlett is your counselor for college and career readiness, so I'm gonna let her take over for a couple minutes. All right, really fast. Um, welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a great break. I just wanted to bring your attention to Naviance. I'm sure your counselors will be sharing with you, but in Naviance, there is a tab called Colleges, and that's that first big section slide. You can kind of see it's hovering in green. I know it's not super clear. And then under that Colleges, the very first one, do you see College Visits? So that's the tab that you would click. You can also see it in a different way in this far right-hand corner under the what's new category. It lists the college reps that are coming to visit you here, okay? We haven't scheduled any field trips to go off campus yet because that's not something that um, I've got legs to do quite yet, but we will hopefully be doing that in the spring. Cross your fingers if anything goes well. So I want to bring your attention to, because as soon as September comes, which is very soon, there are college reps that are coming virtually to you or in person in the building to visit with you. And in the past, we've done it differently. And so I just want to make sure you understand. I want you to sign up for these visits if it interests you. Right now, there are colleges and trade schools there, but I would really like to have speakers that you're interested in. So let's say you want to do long haul trucking, right? And you're interested in your CDL license. Let me know, and then I'll bring one of those trucking companies on campus to speak to you. So this is college and career visits, not just college reps. And so then what would look like the visits where you would click would be once you click college visits, you'll see the list, and then you can sign up. 
There's only two times that we're going to offer college rep visits this year. And then I'm going to step off stage and hopefully I'll see you soon. 8 a.m. and it's virtual for 45 minutes. Will it last that long? Probably not. But you'll be logging into the same Google Meet for every single one. And it's listed in that rep visit, okay? So you'll log in at 8 a.m. and it will be a virtual visit where the rep will be virtually there and myself or Miss Lee will be on to navigate questions, okay? So that's number one, virtual visit 8 a.m. Same link for every 8 a.m. visit. The next one is during flex from 12 to 12.30 and that's in person in the building. So in each of those visits, there's a little prompt that pops up that it goes over that. So it's very simple. There's two visits per day possible. The reps can pick any day they want based on a calendar that I offer them. So the calendar is populating in real time. So check it every day because a school that you're interested in hearing about or a career that you'd like to hear a rep from might pop up. So it's something that I would check every morning, every afternoon, every flex, and then sign up for those. The in-person, I limit to 30. If you've been in 255, it's a very small computer lab. It's kind of like a very um, uh, easygoing kind of room where you can kind of sit down, there's tables and chairs and actually talk to the rep like human to human, all right? So the virtual visit will be just like last year's virtual schooling. The face-to-face -face visits is kind of like a cafe style because I want it to be casual enough that you feel like, what are dorms like? What's the food like? Like you'll be able to ask questions. And for a job, like what's the pay? Things like that. And, and that's hard to do in a room like this, right? Like people aren't gonna raise their hand and ask a personal question. But if you're in a small room with maybe 20 other students, it will be easier. That's the goal, okay? Any questions, come see me in 255. My name is Ms. Catlett. If you just type cat, like meow, cat, it'll pop up, okay? And then you can come check it out. Talk to me about anything you want about your future. I'm giving back to Mr. Bennett. Thank you. Remember, junior year, guys, and this, I was going to do this in a couple seconds, but she, I got her up here pretty quickly and got her to get, be able to get in here and get out of here so she can go back to do what she needs to do. You guys are really going to start if you're college bound or career bound, looking now, not next year, not the last six months of your high school career, junior year. If any of you have aspirations of college and or certain careers, you gotta start really figuring that out now. What, where, how, and it starts with a lot of those things at Naviance, talking to Ms. Catlett, and also talking to your counselors. I'm gonna bring them up now one by one just to let them say hello so you remember who they are, what they look like as we've done everything virtually for the past couple years. You may have remembered seeing them, you may not. If you may be new, I just wanna at least let you know who they are. So, Ms. Train, wanna come up and say hello real quick. Hi, hi guys, how are you? Hi, Malaysia. Hi guys, I'm super excited this year. I know it's gonna be a great one. Um, so yeah, let's do our best. Let's uh, focus. Oh, my name's Ms. Tran. I'm the counselor for letters A through G. All right, guys. Hi, I'm Ms. Zar. For anyone that doesn't know me, I have last names H through O. I know we have quite a few new students here with us, so welcome. We're super excited. Um, I just want to say that I know the last year and a half has been very hard, and there's been a lot of change and a lot of transition. We're super excited to have everyone back. If anybody needs anything at all, just feel free to reach out to us. I mean, we're all going through it, too. Um, anything you need and like Mr. Bennett's saying this is a big year for post-secondary after high school career college We're super excited for a lot of those plans that we came up with in course selection to start coming to fruition and taking some good action steps Okay, so just feel free any point reach out to us for help Hi everybody, uh, I'm Ms. Mertens. I have students with last names P through Z like pizza, everybody likes pizza. Um, like Ms. Zar said, we're here for you. When you are successful, we are successful. We want this to be the best junior year possible, so if there is anything you need, please come see us. Send us a Schoology message or send us an email. We're here for you, okay? Welcome back. All right, so let's start getting into some real thick nuts and bolts of what things are have been on your table or have been happening for a year or things that you may have heard or not heard or things you have to pay attention to, changes we've made, all the real thick information and stuff you really need to focus on like, and really take this information is, cap is coming right now. This is what your counselors are really going to be helping with more than what you have had in the past. 
Every single one of you has an Act 158 pathway that has already been talked about with you, hopefully during your course selection meeting, and or things you've either taken seriously or not taken seriously. I want to say this to you right now again in person, as I've said it online, I've said it in Schoology messages, and some people may have may or not have paid attention to it. Without you fulfilling your Act 158 pathway, you cannot graduate from Upper Darby High School. If you have an Act 158 flex and you don't finish that course, I will not be handing you a diploma no matter how many credits you earn here at Upper Darby. I'm going to say that one more time. It is a state requirement that every single high school has you fulfill the Act 158 state law pathway in order for you to graduate from high school from any high school in the state of Pennsylvania. How Upper Darby will be addressing Act 158 is either through some other pathway you've talked with your counselor and or your Act 158 flex this year that you may have not finished last year or you may have virtually not attended your flex as all, I mean your learning community that is now your flex this year that you may not have focused on as much. You're in 11th grade. You will be back in that flex again every semester until you finish it. It is mandatory by the state of Pennsylvania. So please talk to your counselor about what your Act 158 pathway is. And if you're in that flex, finish it as soon as possible so we can just cross that off the list and move on. Okay? Now, dual enrollment. If you're taking dual enrollment, we've had some changes that happened last year that were communicated. But due to the pandemic, maybe some people weren't reading emails or some people may just glossed over some emails and read some emails a little closer and some information may have got lost in translation. But if you're taking a dual enrollment course at Delaware County Community College, please talk to your guidance counselor. That'll happen during the course selection process in the, in the spring. But the bottom line is you have eight credit opportunities here at Upper Darby High School. Eight. Eight courses that carry credits this year from now on in our new schedule. You are going to have eight courses including those at Delaware County. So if you have a Delaware County dual enrollment course and you want it to count on your high school transcript, you will have an early dismissal or, or seven credits here in the building and one dual enrollment credit equaling eight. There's no more than eight credit opportunities that are going to go on your high school transcript at all here at Upper Darby High School, whether they're, they're a dual enrollment and or in person. If you're confused about that, you can have a conversation with your counselors, all right, and or me. And I'll let you know the details of that moving forward. But I want to let you know that you can't take five dual enrollment classes in a full schedule here at Upper Darby High School. Not allowed. Now, granted, you can take dual enrollment classes and not have it count on your high school transcript, but it will count on your Delaware County Community College transcript for the same price you would of a regular dual enrollment class, which has the Upper Darby discount. That is a lot of information I just gave you, right? But again, if you have anticipation of taking dual enrollment courses, Talk to your counselors about the individual details so that you know what your best decision is for you. Okay? Also, you need 21 credits to graduate from high school here. I'm talking to a lot of kids in the hall, out here who have their pathway set. But if you don't know what your pathway is and you have the credits to graduate at the end of this year, you may graduate as a junior by forfeiting all of your senior activities, including all senior proms and senior activities at all, and graduate at the end of your junior year with 21 credits. That is another conversation you need to have very quickly with your counselors if you have not had it already or have been given the opportunity. Most of you have had that, right, at course selection time last year. If you missed that meeting and didn't attend that virtually because we were out on COVID and we were virtually having those meetings, get with your counselor as soon as you can and ask that question and have that conversation. Early dismissals. What does that mean? If you have an early dismissal on your schedule, the one thing you're not allowed to do is hang around. You have to get out of the building. Point blank. Early dismissal, you must leave. You can have it, right? And that's, if it fits in your schedule, we'll give it to you. But you can't say, I need to go see a teacher. That's what I'm going to talk about in a minute. That's what the asynchronous time is in for the morning, right? You have that built in so that if you do take an early dismissal, 
you can't be here. You're then trespassing. So if you want an early dismissal, we'll put it into your schedule. But you can't like, I'm just waiting for my friends and we're all going to walk home together. Nope, out of the building. Get up and get out on your own, okay? No hallway, no hanging out, no nothing. You want an early dismissal, you got to leave, okay? Now, so that's talking about the social worker. I'm going to bring up Ms. Ms. E to say hello as well. She's our social worker. If anybody has had relationships with Ms. E, you may remember her, but I just wanted to introduce her and let you see who she is again if they're coming back as well. Hey, everyone. I'm Missy. If you need anything at all, I'm in the center. I'm happy to help and listen and do anything you guys need to help support you guys, all right? This is Mr. Gentile, everybody. He's all the way up there. He's our lead teacher. Um, he's going to help you with attendance information as well as restorative practices and behavior needs. He's there to help support you guys, help steer some people in the right direction who maybe made a bad choice or two, help talk you guys through the idea of, like, how do I pair my, repair my relationships with my teachers as I maybe made a mistake? How do I help make this better? How do I help the teachers? And he's also be working with the teachers how to help make it better with you as well. And we're going to try to meet those information in the middle to help rebuild those relationships through what are called restorative practices. And he's going to be helping leading the charge in our center for that. Okay? Just so you know what he looks like, there's a nice picture of him probably 20 years ago. And then there's Mr. Gentile. <laughs> Come on, that's a little bit of a joke. This is a little stuffy. I mean, it's a lot of information. Um, this is Ms. Pickett. She's our activities director. There's a ton of stuff happening this year. And I'm going to let her talk about it. And then after she's done, I'm going to do another reiteration or a plug for something in a minute. Hi, guys. Juniors, finally. Welcome back. We're so excited to see you. Um, these are finally, I know, freshman year. You know, we got a couple events in. I think we did make it to the freshman dance. Uh, last year, not so good with the events. However, I, I'd like to say I promise, but that's tough. But we will have these events. We haven't had a chance to be together, and I highly suggest that you get involved. Pep rally, right? Formal, winter formal, junior prom. These are the events. Powder puff ladies, all right? We get to finally compete with the seniors and show them how great we actually are. Um, so you really do want to get involved. I want to just Quickly stand up, my officers, your officers, where are we? Stand up. Tanvir, there's one, Tanvir. President. Next, where's our other one? Where's our other ones? Tanvir, where are they? Winnie, where are you? I can't see them. Is that, oh, there we go, right back there in the corner. Is that Haja? Hi. Where have we got another one? Oh, there we are. Uh, Delena, and we also have Winnie. So um, those are your class officers. If you ever have any issue you want to talk to, they're your go-to people besides me. Also, we have the royal government, which is about 40 of you. I don't know anyone you want to stand up if you were in royal government last year. Stand up real fast. So we combined it. I know I have more than two. Um, there's about 40 of you. So we have combined homeroom reps. You can have a seat. Homeroom reps, right? And we basically now became the royal government. They're helping us with the pep rallies. They're helping us with decorating uh, for the dances, helping decorate for the pep rally. Everything is a competition, homecoming, competition. Um, what other one? Powder puff, competition. Helping us sell the t-shirts, all of that. If you want to be involved, you will see a message coming out to me. One of our very first events that we have is the blood drive. You'll get a permission slip if you want to donate your, the blood for the blood drive, um, which I highly suggest you do if you are able to. You will get information in the next couple of days about it, but I think it's on the what, 14th? Is that correct? Tuesday the 14th. So you'll hear more information from you, and I'm so glad to see you all back. So ladies and gentlemen, one of the most important things we do in junior year 
Now, it's not done by the seniors, so they have so many other things to do. The junior class every year runs the blood drive. It happens early in September. September 14th, Tuesday, two weeks from now, two and a half weeks from now, we are going to have a blood drive here at Upper Darby High School where you can go and give blood. What I need from you, if you're going to participate, is at the top on your way out, before we ever leave, no one gets it now, is a permission slip from your parents saying you want to do so and a flyer that lets you know what and when and where and how. The first 10 people that get me back that permission slip, I'm going to give a, a class shirt to. I need us to be a strong participation in the best blood drive ever because right now in the United States, we are having a blood shortage already walking into, also having a Category 4 hurricane in the New Orleans area, again, where I know in two weeks' time they're going to need blood. And I want to do our part here at Upper Darby High School to get, excuse me, shh, to help out the best way we can because we're going to have people in need and there's enough blood in this room who are now of age for the first time. I'm not asking you to do it without having that conversation with your parents. That's what the permission slip is for. Ask your parents if you're allowed to. Adults, I'm also going to ask you to participate if you feel comfortable in our building. I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything they don't feel comfortable with. But I would like Upper Darby to have a good showing this year to do our part to help right now, which is a blood, which we are in a blood crisis here in America. So just one last pitch. On the way out the door is your permission slip to grab, to be allowed, to go home, to have that conversation tonight at the dinner table. Get that signed right away and bring it right to the center tomorrow. And we'll get you set up with a time. And we'll have you guys leave class on Tuesday, the 14th. Give blood. There'll be a, a T-shirt given to you, a couple snacks. Just trying to give you the plug to let you know some of the nice things that will happen to you that day. Quiet back down again. So, guys. Here are the real big major changes this year that we got to talk about. Number one, you guys knew you showed up today at 945. You know this schedule I'm going to run through right now is a big major change. We built this schedule, like I said, through plenty of conversation and with students and student committees input and with you guys in mind. Another, another big change, and I'm going to skip one and kind of go back and forth. I'm going to the third one down here that says lunch. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no more lunchroom. You will be eating lunch in your flex period. You will grab it in one of the lunch carts that are going to be spread out throughout the building and have a working lunch in your classroom. Excuse me. You're going to eat your lunch, right, while doing your work in that flex period for 39 minutes. So today when you walk in at 9.45, it's 9.45 to 10.45 would be period one. 10.50 to 11.50, period two. We're going to show you a slide in a minute. Then you were to go to your flex, grab your lunch on the way, work and eat lunch at the same time in that flex period, have period hip three, and then period four, block three, block four, and then leave. We've condensed all that time, and we built that in in the morning so you have the asynchronous time to get your work done either in the morning or at night, your flexibility, build that flexibility for you so you can have that time to fit your schedule, your needs, your family, your support, your way. Restorative practices. Why well, I asked Mr. Gentile is going to lead the charge. We are trying to help restore relationships after they've been grazed. A lot of times we've had times where we may have maybe not made the best choices in this world, which is, fun, which is not the best thing. But, again, we need to find a way to recover from them, right? How do, we, how do we repair what's been done? Do we just go back and sit about our business and let everybody sit there with hurt feelings? Does that help anybody out? No. The idea is how do we come to common ground with the teacher, the assistant principal, the counselor, the lead teacher, something that happened, and how do we fix that as adults? What does the conversation look like? With that, to repair the relationship. Is it just simple, I'm sorry? Or is it not even an I'm sorry? Expressing how things made you feel in the moment. And how the other person or the adult or another student on the other end, how did that make them feel in the moment? Relationships, guys, are important. Getting along with people is one of the most important things you'll ever do in your lifetime. And those skills of avoiding and resolving conflict, you'll need for the rest of your life. The last is what's called royal points. You're going to have this viewable in home access center. There's no more demerits. If you had demerits, 
You may have said to yourself, well, what does that mean? What that meant is he got in trouble from time to time. He did some things that might not have been the best, and they've accumulated based upon things like suspensions or, or, or Saturdays or things that you've done, and it's kept you away from participating. And you had really only got letters if we got in trouble. Now what you're going to be able to see is you're going to get points every week. And you're going to lose those points if something happens the same way. But in your home access center, you're going to see what your grade average is. And if it's over an 85, you're willing to participate in every activity that Ms. Pickett just talked about. If you fall under an 85, you go to nothing. That's the magic number. 85% at all times throughout the year will keep you eligible to go to proms, dances, sporting events. Participate in anything we've talked about already. Is that clear? Thank you. Guys, one thing the pandemic helped us out with was being you guys checking your communication. If you weren't checking your email every day, right, you were lost. If you did check your email every day, you knew exactly what was going on. This is a life skill. We're going to continue with this. You're going to check hack every day. Know your grades, where you're at, what you're missing, what you're not missing. You're going to check your email every day. Get used to knowing what your teachers are sending you, right? Information from your parents that you need to transmit to them and talk to them about. You're going to check your Schoology page every day for announcements from your center, from me, from your counselors, from your lead teacher, from anybody else, your activities director, things you need to know about, things you want to know about. College visits that are on their way. Col hey, I may want to go to Westchester. When does Westchester come in for the recruitment visit to talk to Ms. Catlett? That will also be put on our Schoology page, right? you got to talk this up every single day, right? We also have Google Meets that you need to be participating in, what those meets are, what those meet names are, things you need to pay attention to, all right? And also in-class, in-person communication. This is what your lunch carts are going to look like. There are two options every day. There's a regular option and a vegetarian option. You have the opportunity to grab it and go right to class. There's, no old, there's not a whole bunch of choice, but we are going to make sure you get your lunch and get right to your next class, to the flex, where you're going to eat. The lunch locations, in case you're wondering, please, are right here on this presentation. Excuse me. Shh. Right? They're easily found all over the building. So you're not going to need to go far and wide to find it. There's one in almost every single hallway. There's always one right by a center, as well as multiple places in every single wing, so you're not going to have to go far to get your lunches, okay? It's just a grab and go. Here is what your schedule looks like. And you'll talk about this in your homeroom over the next two days again. It is such a change and such a shift for you guys. We want to make sure that it is hammer home what the expectations are as you go through your schedule. But as you know, you guys came in today at 945. I want you, once you talk to your teachers, to really understand what this is. But what I really need more than anything else is that time in the morning isn't time for you to just sleep in and not do any work. If you struggle academically, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, when you're in my office or in your counselor's office, the first question for your teachers is also going to be, have you visited me in the morning time so that I could help you out via Google Meet? I'm going to ask that. And if you never visited your teacher and you're still struggling, well, we built this for have you have a one-on-one -on -one or a small group opportunity to reach out to your teachers and say, I really need help with this homework. Or I got stuck last night on problem five. And have that help there for you every single day of the week, all year long. Not just in class in front of your peers where you have to raise your hand and maybe you feel a little uncomfortable saying something to your teacher. By yourself in a small communication where they can help you and the, and, and the group shrinks or the, it's an individual help where you can actually access your teachers every single day. Then when you come into school, there is no downtime. What I want you to know is when I was in high school, and many of us in high school, and some of the feedback we got from students was, it feels like I'm sitting here every day and 20 minutes of class drag on at the end, and I really wasn't paying attention or focused because 85 minutes was too long. Um, I couldn't really handle all that length of time, me sitting down and sitting still. So what we did was 
We condensed the block and gave the asynchronous 21 minute time in the morning. As you can see, asynchronous one, two, three, and four connected to block one, two, three, and four. It's called an asynchronous block extension, right? For you to do independent practice time on your own, classwork on your own, so that class didn't feel so long. It's only an hour. That way, the last 20 minutes, you aren't playing like some people might be right doing right now, right? But we are legitimately using that time to the best of our ability, coming into school, getting done what we need to get done, and moving through it quickly so we didn't feel like there was a ton of wasted time and kids losing that attention and that focus. Built with you in mind. We have three learning environments. You'll see this in every single one of your classes. Roll in line right now, streaming in, listening to the assembly via live stream YouTube are our synchronous students. They are going to be involved in every single one of your classes. My synchronous students online, you can no longer have your cameras off. I'm going to repeat that again. You can no longer have your cameras off. Most classes and teachers, unless you're doing it for, shouldn't have a Google chat. You should be stopping the instruction and saying things out loud to your teachers, just like you were a participant of your class. In person, we know what that looks like, that you guys are here, you know what you're doing, you're back to school, but you will have kids in your classes that are participating online and streaming in every single day who chose synchronous instruction. And the third model is an asynchronous online model. We used to call that cyber school. It's now called asynchronous instruction. The difference is, it is the same Schoology course you would get for all three models. Make sense? Okay. Again, I talked to Act 158. I'm going to say it again. This is extremely important. You don't graduate high school without it. If it's rostered in your flex, you have to complete the Safe Schools and the Service Learning Project. You will have 10 safe schools at your disposal, and one service learning project that needs to be completed for you to graduate from high school here at Upper Arby High School. If you're wondering if you satisfied your, your Act 158 a different way, please contact your counselor. Dual enrollment again, talk to your counselor. You can only take a maximum of eight classes that count towards your high school transcript. If one of them is a dual enrollment class, you lose the opportunity to take an art class or a another class, an elective class, or even a major class in your roster. Eight classes, to eight classes total that will go towards your high school transcript. Summer dual enrollment will also count towards next year. So I want to take a summer one and a summer two. You can take two summer dual enrollment classes and then eliminate two classes from your schedule and have less time here in the building if that's what you wish. Quiet, please. Again, as we're almost done and finishing up, if you, are an athlete, if, you, if you don't know who Ms. Camiso is, she's not here today, but she is our athletic director. Some of you who play sports would know who she is now. If you don't know who she is, you can go down and visit her right by the gym. If you're playing sports, she can talk you through the process to get your physical and put it up, up online and the process we use for that. I think it's called, it, I'm positive, it's called Family ID. It can help you through that process of playing any sport, get involved. She can introduce you to the coaches, things of that nature, help you get that physical ready and participate in all athletics. This is the last slide, guys. I'm going to send you right back to the homeroom afterwards. I'm going to kind of wrap this up. It is going quickly. In two years, less than two years from now, less than two years, a year and nine months, I will be handing you a diploma at the Leah Core Center in Temple. That's where we were having our graduation. I want you to know it will happen in the blink of an eye. So now, when you walked in here as freshmen and you looked up for the first time and you said, I have these four long years, how fast did those last two years go? The next two will go even faster. Let's get serious about where we want to be after we leave here. Let's use our counselors and everything at our disposal, and let's have a great school year. Remember where your center is, and if you need us, we're here for you. Come talk to us.